afternoon, everyone. Good morning, the parents of the faith, the homeowners of Mary, who received from the president that they sent us a gift from the court of the birthday. So, thank you again for this beautiful mind and blessing. Thank you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I think we all know why we have to celebrate this Mass in a special way. As Catholics and lovers of the Blessed Mother, today is a great day of celebration. Though before this Mass, I will see what you that a good friend of mine, also a lover of Blessed Mother, passed away because of COVID. So in the generosity of your prayer, please include, you know, as I am including in my mass extension, architect Ben Soriano. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, yes, receiving the news, we might be surprised. But according to one of his children, architect Ben was able to pray and finish the rosary before passing. And just imagine that today is a feast day, a solemnity for us. And contemplating the solemnity, including, of course, the events that happened, the sad events that happened to the Soriano family. People with faith would always entrust their loved ones to God. Ikaka kapag wala na nagagawa tayo sa lupa, hayaan na natin ang Diyos dahil may mas magagawa siya sa ating mahal sa buhay. Now that we celebrate this, let me go to our point for reflection Thinking this great day of rejoicing, I started asking myself, Ano pa kaya ang pwede kong sabihin tungkol sa lakilang pag-istahan ng mga nabirin sa kanyang pakakiyang salamin on her assumption? So the first thing that I thought was to look again that document. I'm sure you're familiar. The document of Pope Pius the Twelve. If I'm not mistaken, it was the Twelve. Now I'm confused. That that says precisely, or rather, that declared precisely, the yes, it's Pope Pius the Twelve that declared precisely the assumption of the Blessed Mother. The Apostolic Constitution entitled Munificente Vosuteis. In that document, the Holy Father started by praising and looking back the homilies and sermons of the Holy Fathers and Great Doctors about the Assumption of the Blessed Mother. His words were this, When we speak about the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the homilies and sermons of the Holy Fathers and Great Doctors spoke of the Assumption of the Mother of God as something already familiar and accepted by the faithful. What does it mean? So way back, before the declaration of the Assumption of Our Lady, people already accepted it by tradition that the Mother of our Lord assumed it to heaven. Proof of it is that we can never encounter in this world the tomb of the Blessed Mother. Even if you go to the Holy Land, you cannot say, 
or no one can dare say, here, the Blessed Mother was buried. No. Yes, they can say, she was buried because there was a tomb there of Mary. Some believe that he, that the she was buried. But no one can say that the body of the Blessed Mother lies inside this tomb. Why is it so? Because tradition was clear that the Blessed Mother, as the document says, upon the end of her earthly life, he was, she was assumed body and soul to heaven. So having said that, one might ask, what made the Blessed Mother assume it to heaven? Experts, theologians would always say, it is not because of her own power, but rather of her relationship to the salvific plan of our Lord Jesus Christ. So all the merits that the Blessed Mother possess or possesses, it is because of her son. Hindi magiging dakila, hindi magiging tanyag si Maria kung hindi sa kanyang ina. So let me now share with you, having mentioned this, three lessons that I would like to communicate. First, that the assumption of the Blessed Mother reminds us that it is her privilege. Mariologists would always call this as Marian privileges. Where does this Marian privileges came from? Listen again to the Gospel of today, to the beautiful song of Mary. It says here, Because he has regarded the loneliness of his handmaid, for behold, henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. All generations shall call Mary blessed. And she will continue. Because he who is mighty has done great things for me. The reason now that Mary has that great Marian privilege because God wanted it. God wanted it. Now, what is the reason why God wanted that this Marian privilege be given to Mary? And what are these Marian privileges? First of all, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, look at the entire scripture. The first book of the scripture, the book of Genesis, already mentioned the Blessed Mother. That was in Genesis 3.15. It says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. Biblical experts would understand this, that the appearance of the Virgin Mary is associated with Christ the Redeemer in the fight against the triumph over Satan. That is the first book of the Bible. The last book of the Bible, that of the Revelation, we have heard. Revelation 12, 11. A great sign appeared in heaven. A woman clothed with the sun, the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of twelve stars on her head. Look at how the scripture was written. The first book and the last book acknowledges Mary. If that scripture is what call, we call the Word of God, who are we now not to honor the Word of God, not to acknowledge the Word of God, honoring Mary in the first part of the scripture and in the last part of the scripture? Not only that. 
Look at the life of Jesus. Contemplate it. In the incarnation of Jesus, Mary was at the side of Jesus. In the last moment of a Jesus' life, Mary was at the side of Jesus. Was it a coincidence? Or is it because Mary was faithful to God's plan? Not only that. If God wanted that Mary be preserved from all state of sin, and not only that, preserved from virginity that she will be known as the perpetual virgin so can she not also preserve the body of the blessed mother from corruption all of this my dear brothers and sisters in Christ would lead us to one truth that the blessed mother because of her faithfulness because of her participation to the divine plan for the salvation of humanity merit these privileges that God had granted her. Second lesson that we can learn from the assumption the assumption of our name assures us Christians, Catholics, believers that we have a great intercessor in heaven. Our lady's privileges are related always to her motherhood. And as such, with our redemption too. From heaven, my dear brothers and sisters, Mary shines forth until the day of the Lord shall come as a sure sign of hope and solace for the people of God during their sojourn on earth. These are the words of the Constitution Lumen Gentio of the Second Vatican Council acknowledging the role of Mary that since Mary is now body and soul in heaven her mission does not end as a good mother he will make sure she will make sure that all her children obedient to the will of her son may also receive the graces that they ask because of her intercession. Kaya nga, isang magandang paalala pa natin sa atin. At kagandahan sa panampalataya, tayong mga katoliko, may natatakbuhang ina kapag nagigibit sa buhay. Yung mga ibang nagpapanggap lamang dyan at sinisiraan ang mahal na Virgen. Sabi ko na lamang sa inyo, good luck. Why is it so? Because for us, Christians, Catholics, Mary, as a good mother, wanted always what is good for his for all his children how many of you following this mass from the comfort of the homes good mothers di ba nila nais ko pa lagi na ipagkaloob ang mabubuti para sa inyong anak Ganun din si Maria. Mas mabuti pa siyang ina kahit sa sino mang ina dito sa lupa. 
we have heard that in the scriptures today. That Mary is blessed indeed of all women. And not only all women, even all mothers. As a blessed mother now, she will make sure that everything we need in this life for our salvation, she will grant it. Examine all apparitions of the Blessed Mother accepted by the Church. Collect all the messages of the Blessed Mother of all those apparitions. Contemplate on the words of the Blessed Mother because they are message of hope. They are message of salvation. They are message for us to trust her more. Kaya nga, at the end of the day, it is our fault, my dear brothers and sisters, if we do not go to the Blessed Mother and have recourse to her. Because what she wanted is that our own good. If you forget this, just consider the events at the wedding of at Cana. The Blessed Mother did not even bother to ask Jesus. What was the words of the Blessed Mother to Jesus? They do not have wine. As simple as that. She did not even ask Jesus, Son, they do not have wine. Can you do something? You cannot find that in that scripture. She opened up that they do not have wine. Now our Lord knows already the intention of, her, of, her beloved, of His beloved mother. For that reason, our Lord said, It is not yet my time. But even though she, He did something out of respect, honor of the Blessed Virgin. So imagine now, if we are pleading to God, we are asking Jesus of anything, and it was not granted to us to go. Shall we go? The key and secret to get the heart of Jesus is to whisper to the Blessed Mother our wish, our intentions, our desires. Because if that intentions of ours, if that desires of ours, if that wish of ours, when our mother understood that it is good for us, she will intercede for us. So this is the second point or lessons that we can learn from the assumption of our lady. From heaven, she continues to intercede to all her sons and daughters. Third lesson that we can learn. The assumption of our lady is an assurance also to each of us believers that one day we will go to heaven. So the assumption of our lady tells us of our destination. Destination. When St. Paul in his letter to the Philippian mentioned these words, it is made possible through Christ rising from the dead. He will refashion the body of our holiness and conform it to the body of his glory. St. Paul was referring about the resurrection of our Lord. But he was also referring to the resurrection of Mary. Not in the sense that the same resurrection of, of, of Jesus. But she, he was pointing on the glorified body of Mary assuming into heaven. That time will come when we participate 
and we believe in our Lord who died and rose from the dead, we too will die and we too will rise from the dead. And once we rise from the dead, where do we go? It should be clear to each one of us that we want to go to heaven. Mary, through her assumption, showed and lead us. This is the path, my dear children. My son, assumed, my son ascended into heaven. I assumed into heaven. You as children of mine, this is also your destination, heaven. But heaven can only be rich and attained when we remain faithful to the will of God while we are here on earth. Maging tapat lamang tayo sa kalooban ng Diyos, sa buhay lang natin ang nais niya. Dahil sa huli, pinakita na ng mahal na ina na kaya marating ang langit. Pero sa kanyang pag-akyat sa langit, hindi lang iniakyat ang kanyang kaluluwa. Iniakyat rin ng Diyos ang kanyang katawan. Dahil ang katotohanan, ang Diyos na meron tayo, it's a God of fullness. Ibig sabihin, binibigay niya palagi ang kompleto. Hindi yung kalahati. Hindi yung bahagi. He gives in the food. Now, the Blessed Mother is assurance. Siya na ang nakilang halimbawa. See, my mother assumed into heaven body and soul to show to each one of us believers that this will also happen to us at the end of time. It is not only our soul that will attain heaven. It is also our body. For that reason, for that reason, let us always strive to follow the example of the Blessed Mother. We all know, and I have said this several times, the Blessed Mother has and will always be pleasing to God because she possesses all the qualities that God was asking for each human being to possess. Katulad ni Maria, makakabit natin ang dami kung tutularan rin natin ang ating mahal na ina. Three truths and lessons we learn from the assumption of our Lady. First is this. The assumption is a Marian privilege. Second, the assumption teaches us that we have a great intercessor in heaven and her name is Mary. Third lesson, the assumption of our Lady is an assurance for us that as long as we are faithful and follow God's will, our final destination is life everlasting. Amen. Then in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.